Getting started. New software can be daunting and even though the program is easy to use, the aim of this video is to help to get you up and running as quickly as possible. There is also an overview video that I'd recommend you watch as well. Ok, let's get started. Click on the program icon on your desktop. If you've not registered and unlocked your program, you'll be able to use it as a trial version until the time limit expires. Once the program is loaded, the startup options will appear, giving you the options to create a new business, open existing business, or open the sample file. In this example, we're going to create a new business. You will have the opportunity to import an existing file if you have used an earlier version of the program. If this is the first time you have used the program, simply click on Next. Type in the name of your business and then click on the down arrow to select the business template that best describes your business. The business template you select will establish columns that are generally used by that type of business. You can then add, delete or modify the columns to personalise them for your business. Then select the month and year when you're starting your records. This will display the current month and year, but you can change it if you need to. Click on Next. OK, now you get to create an account for each bank account you use in your business, including credit cards. You can add up to 10 accounts at this stage and more later if you wish. If you have a separate petty cash system, you can also create an account for this. Each working account needs a unique name so you can easily identify which account you're working in. Click in the first box and type in a unique name for your main account. Then press your tab key to add others. By the way, you can easily add other accounts later and even duplicate an account that you have customised for your business. Once you've added your accounts, click on Next. If you know which general ledger, or write-up program as they sometimes call it, that your accountant uses, select that program. This is not critical and you can select I don't know if you don't know. Click on Next. That's it. Your file is now ready to create, so click on Next and save your file. Your file will then open at the home page where you can select a bank account and get started. Before we do that though, let's run through what to do if you have an earlier cash flow manager file that you wish to import. Let me demonstrate by creating another new business by clicking on Create New Business File from the File menu. This time I will answer yes in relation to the question about importing an existing file. Record the name of your business and click on the next button. Browse to the location of your earlier version file and click on the file to import. You can import either a data file which has a .cf extension or a backup file that has a .bc extension. When you have selected the file, click on the open button to return to the new business wizard. What account name do you wish to call this file? The name of your import file will appear, but you can change this as each account needs a unique name. You can now choose to import the complete file or all transactions from a selected date or your reconciled bank balance and outstanding deposits and payments from the date you select. When you're ready to proceed, click on Next. If the file you're importing uses the download bank statement function, you will also be asked to identify the bank. That's it, your new business file is ready to create. You can so select the location for your file and click on Save. Now earlier versions of the program had a separate file for each bank account, so you will be given the opportunity to import other earlier version files if you wish. 
Your file will then open at the home page where you can select a bank account and get started. The accounts you have created are listed in blue on the left together with current balance of your account. There are buttons to add a new account or delete an account. To select an account to work on, click on the account name. The account will open to the Money Out page to start recording any payments you make from this account. You will notice columns with grey headers on the left and columns with blue headers on the right. These are the columns that have been created by the business template we have selected. So before we do anything else, let's go and customise the columns. We can either do this from the Tools menu or by clicking on the Customise Columns icon on the toolbar. A list of the Money Out columns appears, but you can change the Money In columns by clicking on the tab on the left. Let's add a new column for delivery fees. Click on the Add New button. This will add a new column at the bottom of our list. Type in the new name and press Tab on your keyboard. If you know the accountant's code, type it in. You see, the write-up programs accountants use have a chart of accounts that use numbers. So it makes it a little easier for the accountant if your reports list the same numbers as in their write-up program. This isn't essential and can be added at any time. Click on your tab key again. A drop-down box will appear and you can select the appropriate tax type for that column. Tab to the profit and loss column and ensure that the checkbox is ticked if that column relates to your profit and loss or unticked if it does not. Ask your accountant if you are unsure. Now, you probably don't want this to be the last column on your list. You can move the column by clicking on the sort A to Z to sort alphabetically or select the column and then click on the up and down arrows to move it to where you want it. If you want to delete any columns, click on the grey box on the left side to select it and then click on the delete button. You can also click on the name and type a new name for any column you wish to change and also change the other parameters. However, each column requires a unique name so if that column already appears in either the money in or the money out sections you will need a different name. Click on the Save button when you are finished, and then the Cancel button to exit the Customize Columns area. When you return to your Money Out section, the changes will be applied. Now you can start recording your payments from that account by clicking on the First Day cell. Record the day, the name of the supplier, any details that will help you recall what the payment was for and the check or reference number if that applies. Now record the amount of the payment. If the amount will appear on your bank statement, record it in the total bank payments column. If it is cash, record it in the total cash payments column. Then record the amount in the allocation column for the payment. I am using a smaller screen size to keep the video size down. But if you use a higher resolution than most people normally use, you will see a lot more of the allocation columns. You can arrow to the column you require, or use your tab key, or you can press the first letter of the column heading to jump to the next column that starts with that letter. Press enter to record the amount in any column. Actually, you can also split the amount into several columns if you need to as long as the total amount you allocate is the same as the total amount column. To change sections, simply click on the tab at the top for the section you want. For example, to record money coming into the account, click on the Money In tab. 
you enter money in in the same way as money out, except you must also indicate whether you have deposited the money in the bank. So if you deposit this transaction in the bank, record it in the bank deposits column. Record any other amounts in the receipts not banked column, including any transaction held over to deposit with other transactions. On the last transaction that makes up the deposit, record the amount of the actual deposit in the bank deposits column. As the deposit is greater than the total transaction amount, it will record a negative amount in the receipts not banked column to balance the line and offset the other transactions that make up the deposit. The other important section is the bank reconciliation. There is a tutor button in the bank reconciliation section that has more videos on how to do this important process, so we won't go through that now. The one final thing that I will show you here is how to duplicate your accounts, as this allows you to create other accounts with the same column headings. Click on the options icon. There are a number of options. The one we are after is Duplicate Accounts. If we record a name for the duplicate account and click on Save, a new account will be created for us that has all the same column headings as the original account. So it makes it quick and easy to set up accounts for your business. By the way, more help is available by clicking on the How Do I Assistant at the top of your screen and the help icon on the toolbar that has even more comprehensive assistance.